Hey everyone, it's Mishi. I am here on this lovely cloudy spring day in Kansas and this is Rebel behind me. This is our horse Rebel. Um, today I'm going to tell you about yellow dock, curly dock. Um, it's growing all over the place here. Beautiful plant, one of my absolute favorites. Um, and the reason I brought you here today to where our horse and a bunch of other horses are um, oh, Rebel's getting impatient. He wants me to go get him food. Hang on, Rebs. Um, the reason I brought you here today to where all the horses are is because um, people walk their horses and the horses um, fertilize this whole entire area. And I've noticed that in places where we've kept our horse before, in different parts of the country, um, the plants grow to be big and vibrant and magnificent and super colorful um, and bright. And that's obviously because of the horse fertilizer. So um, that's why I brought you here today to show you the yellow dock because they are very big, beautiful plants, um, particularly here at this farm. So, all right, let's get to the yellow dock. Hey everyone, I'm here today in our field right by where our horse is. You can see him down there. Um, I wanted to show you these big, beautiful patches of yellow dock. It's kind of hard to see, it's a little bit shadowed, but there's three big ones over here and there's a whole bunch over here. This is all yellow dock. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. I'll try to get out of the sun. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is called yellow dock. Some people call it curly dock, Rumex crispus. Um, it is in the buckwheat family. Um, all right, so let's talk about the leaves. The way that you can identify this plant is usually by its leaves. It has these really long, most of the time they're narrow, but sometimes you can see they get fatter, but they're very curly, hence the name curly dock. So that's the way you can always tell yellow dock from a distance. You can always spot it and know what it is by these super curly, curly leaves. Now, some people can confuse them with burdock leaves because burdock leaves can also be very wide and sometimes furled, but these are super curly. Um, they are smooth and some people eat the leaves. Now, the leaves have a lot of oxalic acid and it makes them very sour, just like um, if you've ever tasted sheep sorrel, part of the same family, that's also Rumex. Um, and the leaves are very sour. And so they can be eaten um, in the springtime when they're young and they're green, um, but it's best to actually cook them before you eat them. Now these little tiny seeds, so you can kind of see this stalk here. So let's get a little bit closer. Okay, so you see this stalk? Now this stalk grows, it'll just keep growing much, much, much taller. So you kind of have this like, this curly leafy plant and then this tall stalk which is full of these little tiny seeds. And actually people eat these seeds in the springtime when they're still green. Now, the most common use of yellow dock is its root, which I can't show you now because the best time to harvest the yellow dock root is in the fall time when these green, these bright green seeds, when they start to turn brown. So when they're all brown and dried out, that's when you're going to uproot the plant and use its roots. And the roots are the most common part of the plant that are used. Now the roots are amazing. They're yellow, they're bitter. Um, I, I love yellow dock. <laughs> it's one of my favorite plants. Um, now the roots can be used for many, many things. Um, the most common thing that yellow dock root is known for is um, that it's a digestive bitter. And so it helps with the whole digestive tract. It helps stimulate and release bile from the liver. So it also can help the liver with any uh, overload of toxicity, um, just general cleansing of the liver, helping stimulate the liver so that it works more efficiently. And it does the same thing in the digestive tract. It helps digest food. It helps stimulate digestive enzymes so that all in all, we have a better, more functioning digestive tract. And when the digestive tract is functioning more properly and more optimally, then the liver also functions better. Um, now, yellow dock is also full of iron. And so it's a great um, iron supplement. I know a lot of people make syrups um, or even just take the tincture of yellow dock root um, during uh, 
after pregnancy if they are anemic, if they've lost a lot, a lot of blood, um, and if they're low in iron. Now what's cool about yellow dock is not just that it's high in iron, but it actually helps pull iron that's stored in the liver. It helps it pull that iron from the liver and it assimilates that iron through the rest of the body. So it's a really awesome powerhouse of a plant. Um, it's great for helping with cases of diarrhea and it can actually also help um, as a laxative. Um, there are many more awesome things to say about yellow dock, but what I'm going to do is continue that in the next video. I'm just going to get a little bit closer up here so that you can see these really cool tiny baby seeds that are edible. And these cur super curly leaves, ooh, the sun. See these big curly leaves. Now there are a lot of plants that have, maybe I'll see, here, I'll go over to this next plant right over here. See, some of the leaves are really just kind of thin and skinny, but still very curly. So you'll get these skinny leaves and then you'll get these, you know, huge, chunky, wide leaves, but they're all curly. And then you can see again, the stems with the little tiny seeds over there. And so one last time, I'll show you all these cool little plants. Now, yellow dock um, grows in so many places. I've seen it um, all across the country, actually. Um, and it likes to grow in somewhat moist soil, but it will grow along roadsides and in ditches. Like you'll see yellow dock off the side of the freeways here. Um, like I said, I've seen yellow dock in many, many different places across the country, but I have never seen them as big and beautiful and robust as these plants. Um, I foraged for some last, uh, last fall, um, to get some of the roots, um, where I lived, um, in Western, sorry, in, in, uh, yes, in Western Washington, Washington state. Um, and the plants were much, much smaller. The leaves were thinner. There weren't as many leaves on each, in each little plant. And so I'm hoping that when it comes time to pull out these roots, the roots will be just as big and beautiful and robust as the plants are. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to pick out any of these roots right now because I think it would just be a waste because like I said, the best time to get the roots is in the fall time when these seeds have all dried up and turned brown. Um, and when that time comes, we will definitely make a video and show you how to get these roots. The roots are very hard to dig out. Um, they're very tough and they're kind of just buried deep down. And so you need like a really good knife, like a hori hori. Um, I usually have my husband uh, pick out, uh, dig out the roots for me because they're just so hard to get and I don't want them to snap. Um, I have some pictures of the fresh roots that I can attach with this video. And I guess we will come back again and revisit these in the fall time when we can actually harvest them. Okay, I just wanted to finish off with a few more thoughts about yellow dock. Um, I'm indoors right now. I don't have the yellow dock in front of me, but we've all seen what it looks like close up. Um, so, okay, a couple more things, which I didn't mention. Yellow dock has um, high levels of oxalic acid, which I mentioned previously. And um, because of that, sorry, I'm just gonna get out of the noise. Because of that acid, it is not recommended for people who have kidney stones or who are prone to having kidney stones. Um, they should either avoid it completely or just take yellow dock in moderation. So that was the first thing I wanted to mention that there is that um, caution against yellow dock. Um, the next thing is that I wanted to talk about using it topically on the skin or actually for the skin in general. Now we mentioned that yellow dock is really, really great. It works, it works really well on the liver um, and on the whole entire digestive tract. Um, and what it does, some of what it does in the liver is that it opens up the pathways in the liver to help the liver detoxify better. And in doing this, it can help clear up many skin issues. We know that when um, there are skin issues like eczema or acne, um, really we should start with the liver, um, cleansing the liver, helping the liver work more efficiently, and that will oftentimes be the key to clearing up um, skin issues. Um, and so 
when we use yellow dock internally to help the liver, that can also help with skin issues externally. Okay, go down and get a Band-Aid. Um, the other thing is that yellow dock can be used externally as a poultice to help all sorts of skin issues. Yes, one, one moment, one moment. Um, it can be used externally as a poultice for eczema, itchy skin, rashes, bruising, um, cuts, boils, blisters. It can be used as a poultice externally for these issues also. So it also helps the skin externally. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that I hope I got the point across um, strongly enough for how well yellow dock works on the entire digestive system and the liver, which includes the gallbladder as well. It is one of the finest, best herbs to use for all around digestive health um, for many, many different things, like I was explaining um, previously. And I guess in the question and answers, we can get more specific and more detailed, but I just wanted to put it out there that Yellow Dock really is a digestive powerhouse and it is so good for the entire digestive tract starting from the mouth, going all the way down. Um, all right, that's Yellow Dock. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson.